What's up guys, Ryan from Addicted to Nature, and unfortunately today I noticed my fish had ick in my aquarium. So we're going to talk about how I treat this really common aquarium parasite, as well as why you should treat every single fish in the aquarium. So in this video, my cherry barbs and my rummy nose tetras have ick. You can see those little white spots on them. It's a mild case, but we want to catch it at the beginning. So the first thing I want to say is that it has very low specificity, meaning that it can infect a wide species and variety of fish. So even if one or two fish in your aquarium are showing symptoms, you should treat the entire tank just to be safe. Now, the second thing is it has temperature dependent growth. So depending on temperature, it can take anywhere from a week to eight weeks to finish its life cycle. And this is important because the higher the temperature, the faster it finishes its life cycle and the shorter amount of time that we need to treat because we can only treat this ick parasite at a certain part of its life cycle. The third thing is it is a protozoan so that the antibiotics such as erythromycin or furin 2 will not work and you're further delaying the treatment of your fish if you choose to go with that. The fourth thing is just a fun fact and it is that it is a true endoparasite meaning that it actually burrows underneath the skin of your fish or the gills or the fin and so it's protected from the outside environment and unlike things like a leech where it actually attaches to the outside of the host. So let's get into the life cycle. You're going to notice ick most likely when it's on the fish as little white spots. This is the trophant stage and it's burrowed underneath the skin or the gill of your fish and it's going to feed during this time, it's going to grow. And you're going to notice that your fish is lethargic and might not eat as well. And it could also be flashing, meaning that it's going to go straight towards the rock or the gravel and try to rub itself and rid itself of the ick. But like I said before, it is actually burrowed underneath the skin and no medication can actually reach the parasite during this stage. And once it's fed enough, it burrows out of your fish and becomes a towmont. At this stage, it can go all around your tank looking for a surface to attach itself. This can be a plant, a rock, gravel, or glass. And then it encases itself in a protective gel, becoming a tomocyst. Inside, it's reproducing and it can make upwards of a thousand new ick babies. In this stage, it can really depend on the temperature. So anything from 75 to 80 degrees, it can take from hours to days to burst out with warmer temperatures, making it a short amount of time. And at the tomosis stage, we cannot treat, which is because it is protected by the gel. So the last stage is the tomite stage, which are the infectious babies. Once the cysts burst, the babies come out, they float around and swim around with the water current and attach to a new fish or another suitable host. So at this point, it is very susceptible to medications and we should use the medications to target the tomite stage before they attach to another host. And if you do not find another host, then the tomites die after a couple of days, about 48 hours, which is so important in that we need to treat every single fish in the aquarium because of this. So let's get started into the treatment. So the first thing to do is prepare a bucket of clean water. This can be tap water or from another tank. As long as you add a dechlorinator, if you're using tap water, it's going to be fine. I know you can be stressed out or worried about your fish, but adding dechlorinator ensures that we don't have chlorine, which will kill your fish much faster. All right, so we use methylene blue in the treatment today. This is a 1% aqueous solution. You can get this online. And basically it's saying that it's methylene blue dissolved in water. The recipe is nine to 10 drops per US gallon, or if you don't like counting drops, it's about 0.5 milliliters. So once you get in there, you're gonna let it mix and also add in an air stone. Now the air stone and the airline tubing can be stained by the methylene blue. So just keep an eye out for that. It's not that harmful for fish. So I just let it happen. And this air stone will serve to oxygenate the water when your fish goes in and mix up the medication really well. 
I realized that a blue bucket and some blue liquid won't be very telltale, so here's a cup with a, with a blue liquid for you guys to see. And every couple of days you want to change the water. This can be because of fish waste or just because the medication isn't as potent. After about two weeks or so, you're okay to move the fish out, but always remember to treat every single fish and leave your tank clean so that any of the tow mites in there that are swimming around looking for active hosts cannot find a fish and then they die in a couple of days. So keep this, keep the water change schedule. You can feed some fish every now and then, but I always feed about a couple hours before we change the water. So two weeks later, this is my cherry barbs, and as you can see, they are now clean and free of parasites. So after this treatment, it should clear your tank. You don't have to change a lot of water. You just need to leave the tank fish free for the two weeks here. You can work on algae, you can work on aquascaping, whatever you want to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned how to treat this very common disease. And if you would like, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, give me a like, comment down below with any more tips you have for this disease. So thank you so much. I will see you guys next time.